Mortgage rates jumping to their highest level since the 2008 financial crisis. The average rate on a 30-year fix now, 6.7%, according to Freddie Mac, more than doubling from 3% just one year ago. So what's ahead for the housing market? We're joined now by Realtor.com manager of economic research, George Rashu. Uh, George, nice to see you. Uh, you have separate housing debt out today. We're going to get to that in a moment, but let's start with these rates. With continuing Fed tightening, where do you believe rates are headed and how severe do you expect the, the impact to be on home values? Dave, that is the question of the season. When you look at mortgage rates, even a month ago, we would not have expected we'd see anything within a 7% range. And yet, here we are very close. What that really means when you put numbers to, to paper is that for the typical buyer, someone who's on a, on a median household income of about $71,000 and putting a 20% down on a median priced home at 3%, uh, they would have over $107,000 more. So put it another way, the buyer today in, in September of a medium priced home lost about $100,000 in purchasing power. That's tremendous. When you juxtapose on top of that, the fact that home prices are still rising compared to a year ago, though they are finally backing off peak, and you throw in the fact that in inflation is eroding most um, people's incomes, you have a, an affordability crisis, which is making it really challenging. And with the Fed, to your point, committed fully to bringing inflation down here to 2%, I am not surprised to see rates uh, moving within 7%, and very likely before the end of the year, we could see even mid-sevens. And so what sort of trends are you seeing in terms of inventory and the changes there? Rochelle, what we're seeing at Realtor.com, looking at the inventory picture, is uh, Number one, an, a significant improvement. Most of it, mind you, borne out by the significant drop off in demand. However, active inventory is up from a year ago um, and homes are spending longer on the market. That, in a sense, is really good news. It's showing market is moving back towards balance. At the same time, worryingly, as we go into the colder months of the year, and a lot of homeowners are beginning to get worried they missed the peak, we're seeing new listings pull back. So just at the time when we need supply to increase, we're seeing some of that supply shrink, and that's still keeping upward pressure on prices for the time being. George, you mentioned the fact that homes are sitting on the market for longer. How long is a typical home on the market? And I guess, how does that compare to those pre-pandemic times? So in, in many respects, we're looking at roughly, uh, you know, around the 40 day mark right now. Pre-pandemic, we would normally expect the home to be on the market somewhere closer to, to 60 days, right? Somewhere between two and three months would be more of a balanced market. So we're still a ways off from that point. Uh, the, the, the encouraging uh, factor here is the, the fact that we're seeing um, a lot of sellers still trying to, to make a go at it. But for buyers, the real challenge is their incomes uh, and the, their ability to borrow are really being curtailed. And in effect, what the market is doing is pretty much following what the Federal Reserve uh, has said. I mean, we heard Chairman Powell at the last meeting of the FOMC say that housing needs a correction. And it, if anything, we're seeing that actually take place in real estate markets right now. Yeah, and that statement from Powell raising a lot of questions. Do you think the Fed can bring home values back to or seeks to bring home values back to 2019, 2020 levels? That's a great question, Dave. And I don't think the Fed has a particular target in mind uh, like they do with, with inflation. However, I do see it from at least the remarks, Powell's <coughs> remarks, he pointed out that people today can not really afford to purchase a home. And for many first time home buyers, that's absolutely the case. So from my perspective, I see at least uh, having homes price wise move sideways as a real benefit uh, as, as long as incomes keep rising. If however, inflation lasts longer into next year than the Fed anticipates, that could further erode uh, purchasing power and that's even before we discuss any economic outlook, a potential recession or labor market, which is still very strong, slowing down at some point next year.
And George, just quickly, because I know in the suburbs, I've started to see home prices coming down. But what about the top 10 metro areas? What are you seeing there? In the top 10, at least by size, we're still seeing activity fairly brisk. In fact, when we, we look at our top 50 metros, we're only seeing a couple of them with actual price declines year over year. Uh, the others, the, the, it's a combination of number one, the fact that we are still in a tight inventory situation. Yes, it's improving but it's nowhere near historical markets. Second, we're still seeing buyers in, in, interested in purchasing. The truth is with changing stages of life, with changing life circumstances, transactions will continue. People will retire, people will change jobs, people will have children and need a bigger home. So we're still seeing buyers in the market. It's just that it, right now, the only ones that can afford are either repeat buyers who have a lot of equity, uh, folks with cash, think here retirees selling in a high cost area, moving somewhere more affordable, or people with higher incomes. Uh, and for, for those outside of those, of those groups, it's a much, much more challenging environment. George Ritu, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Great to have you.